Could you eat a meal this big for a year and lose weight? I lost 140 pounds. This Zupa Toscana was featured in a national magazine because the massive success that people are having in the Eat Like a Bear community. This is the national magazine with this soup. The themes today in this video, how simple this is, I'm whipping it up for you, but don't overlook the simplicity and the importance of the simplicity in driving massive amounts of weight loss success. Yes, it was called a triple threat due to the low carb ketogenic approach, the intermittent fasting, and a fat blocking nutrient, which the Woman's World editors discovered in the soup. But the real triple threat aspect of this is it's very calorie minded. I'm gonna talk about each of those issues, but especially the intermittent fasting part after I whip this soup up. There is also a special surprise ingredient in here that makes this extra fun and exciting. Wait for that little story as well. And so this is a low carb Zupa Toscana. It uses cauliflower instead of the traditional potatoes. And it follows a distinct framework that is driving massive success at Eat Like a Bear. I want you to follow along with this recipe. I want you to learn the framework. You can learn the framework more deeply in the three day challenge. It's three days of eating. The second day is a cooked meal, much like this. And in the three day challenge, which is free, I walk you through the whole approach. I encourage you to find that. Also, this magazine featured the book, now only in digital, but in production for print. This is my home printer version of the book, Half My Size with Soup, Skillets, and Sautés. This recipe is in the book, of course, but it's right here in this video as well. There are a bunch of recipes in here. And more importantly, there's a whole philosophy in this. If you get the book, I encourage you to get it. Read the psychology part. Read how you're going to implement this kind of approach to eating every single day, changing your life. Maybe like it's changed mine. Key points from the book and from this video. This is simple. This is simple. You will see no fancy ingredients in this. You'll see me cutting a lot of corners. I did actually grate cheese for this but all of the ingredients are so, so super, super simple because if you're gonna do something every single day for a year and then off into the sunset, you need a plan for when you wake up and it's kind of a bad day. So what if on your good days, like today's a good day for me. This is a day for me to experiment with recipes, see what I like, plan for a bad day that is likely to come. Humans have bad days. If we set our intention on a good day and we're practicing what's working, Working on it, setting our intention about how we're eating on those bad days, we're gonna win, we're gonna win all day long. So let's whip this up and then I will talk more about the one meal a day, which is a common question that we're getting. Again, not one that you have to follow, but I want you to understand why it's driving such additional amount of success in this community. Recipe calls for 12 ounces of cauliflower. This is two pounds. This is gonna feed me I'll eat half and I will spread the rest of it about my family. So that's more than a double batch of cauliflower right there. One half gallon of beef broth for a double recipe. Garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper. In we go. Sausage. <laughs> this is a total convenience product, I admit. Someone else cooked this sausage for me. It is ground sausage, Italian seasoning. It's frozen, so I just got it out of the freezer. I just popped it in here. So you know, the cauliflower is frozen. The sausage is frozen. <laughs> this is completely shamelessly easy, okay? That is a winning strategy in the long game. So find some products like this in your local stores that are gonna help you get by on those bad days. While that is cooking up, I want to say something about the greens in this soup. So very often people will use a kale. Kale is fabulous. It's absolutely fabulous. Not everyone will have access to kale. Not everyone likes kale. You will see me a lot of times in these recipes using spinach, and that's because it's what I happen to have at the time. Lots of people like spinach. Spinach is very mild in flavor and you can buy it just about anywhere. So it's a really good go-to for this particular soup. But today I am not using spinach. I am not using kale. I am using something even cooler that looks like that. And bonus points for anyone out there 
who already knows what this is. Okay, so I will give you a clue because I took a picture of it as I was harvesting it. <laughs> and you foragers out there already know what it is from this photo, from the fact that I picked it in a creek bed <laughs> right here on my property. And the key message is, any of these soups, like let's not overly worry about that exact green that's going in there. It's all interchangeable. You're maximizing your soup happiness with this recipe. If you have it, it's easy, and that is a point of happiness for you, you use that thing, whatever it is. If you can walk down to your creek and pick watercress and put it into your soup, and that helps maximize your soup happiness, then go get some watercress. And so no, this is not kale. It's not kale. It's a lot more cool than kale today for me because I was able to harvest it from a local creek. I mean, come on, come on. And so I'm actually gonna add it when the soup is done. So a lot of times I'll put spinach in as it's cooking. You can add it after too. I, it just doesn't matter that much. The spinach, if you like it sort of not super cooked, I would add it at the end. You know, any of these greens, but you know, greens cook up real quick in that hot soup. So it's, it's kind of optional if you're putting it in while it's cooking or if you're putting it in sort of after and just kind of mixing it in. I wouldn't overly worry about that point, but I kept it out because I wanted to tell you about it and how cool it is, okay? Broth is a central ingredient in this soup. And because this is one of my soup dishes and not one of the skillets or sautés, in all of those dishes, I say, hey, you can use a homemade broth. You can use something out of a carton. And for this, you can too. But I'm gonna say, because it has a lot of broth in it, because you're gonna wanna lean hard into that flavor, I'd really go in this direction. This is just homemade broth. You just put bones in a crock pot or a pressure cooker, cover them with water, and let them stew. You strain off the liquid. This is what you got. It's really that simple. And you, especially if you're using whole cuts of meat that already have the bones, then this is a very economical way to make broth as well. But the flavor is exceptional and that flavor will impart itself into your soup. It will just be that much more satisfying. So for something like a soup, I would lean into the homemade broth, but you know what? There is nothing about any of this that is required. If you want soup and you don't have this, but you can grab this, Grab it and go. Go get it. Make no apologies for keeping things simple, simple, simple. Okay, that's our theme. But a few notes about components. This cauliflower is really a great replacement for that typical potato that you will find in Zupa Toscana. The cauliflower will not affect your blood sugar to the same degree that a potato will. The overall calories are mindful here. And really consider the role of the cauliflower in keeping those calories ratcheted down because essentially you have a very bulky food in cauliflower that is very low in calories. And so you end up filling up faster on fewer calories. And this is why this whole framework, so the framework is calorie-minded, it's low in carbohydrates, so it does not affect your blood sugar like a lot of the meals will. And I eat this in one hour in a day. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that, but in terms of the nutrients and the components of this, we talk about the ridiculously big salad having four layers and the soup follows the same framework. In a salad, you have your lettuce layer. Here we have cauliflower that like replaces that lettuce or the cabbage or whatever it is in that first layer. Second, here we have the sort of fat and sauce components you're gonna see I'll be adding a cream that will add some fat to this. We have, um, in, in the salads, we have a dressing that has fat in it. Here we also have the protein as we have in the salads. And so here I added the sausage. Often with this, I'll add some sprinkles of bacon. I don't have that today. This is totally legit even without bacon. And then there's sort of the optional extras in the fourth layer and in the salad. This is where we can get into a lot of trouble adding all the things that probably might have made us fat in the fat in the past that we want to keep eating. And so you just kind of have to watch what's going on in that fourth layer so that you're not adding like too many extras that are 
kind of reducing your momentum with the weight loss. In this case, our sort of fourth addition is gonna be some Parmesan cheese. Again, maybe some bacon sprinkles if I had them, which I don't. On the salads, I like to add onions. Sometimes I add nuts. Sometimes I add like the Parmesan or some little bit of extra cheese. And so this soup, it's highly crafted around a framework. So I don't want you to miss that because yeah, it's really basic. It's really basic and highly strategic, highly, highly strategic. Let's not overlook the strategy component. That is how you end up in a national magazine, you guys. This exact soup was featured here because it is so flippin' strategic. They talk about it as a triple threat, and in this case, it's low carb, intermittent fasting, and they talk about a fat burning component. But I would say the real third part of this that makes it the triple threat is the calorie mindedness of the recipe. Those are the three hard hitting elements of this soup. But yeah, this is the October 18th, 2021 issue of Woman's World. It featured community member Sean Tedick. Jackie Patty is in the cover story as well, and I'm quoted in it. And they talk all about these soups. And they feature the Zupa Toscana, which you're learning here today. And so I'm grating cheese here for that fourth layer of the soup. Optional ingredients. But I want to say, the digital book that looks like this printed, half my size with soup skillets and sautés, has nothing that you have to grate. I mean, absolutely nothing at all. In fact, all of the spices are powdered. You know, like get them out of a jar and sprinkle them in kind of a thing. Nothing to chop. That's highly strategic. There's a reason for it. You will always be able to level up your soup skillet some sautés with some fresher ingredients, with doing things like grating the cheese. But I'll tell you what, if you need to lose massive amounts of weight, you have to be consistent every single day. And I'll tell you what, not every day do I want to grate Parmesan cheese, for goodness sakes. So you can buy it already grated. You cannot put it in the soup. There's a lot of options. But if you sort of expect of yourself to sort of prance out every day making something that's like all gourmet or whatever, it's going to be very difficult to live in that every single day. Set the intention instead to get through tomorrow with a very simple soup using only garlic powder, salt and pepper, using some basic stuff. On those bad days, eat and go be awesome, as I always say. Push yourself out into something that's going to fulfill you and help you feel better on that bad day. I often push myself out into a hike. It makes such a big difference. But yeah, bad day, you're gonna have to push yourself. You're not gonna wanna do it almost by definition. But that in fact is the winning long game strategy that bridges your right into maintenance and sets you up for success in maintenance as well because you have a lot of bad days in maintenance. Look, as humans, we have bad days and we need to set up our good days to help us bridge through those bad days. That's what these simple recipes really do. And it has cooked for approximately 30 minutes. I'm tasting the doneness of the cauliflower. It still has a little bit of crunch in it, which I like. If you want it super soft, you'd want to just cook it a little longer. That's all. As it is, I would say it needs a little more salt, but we're adding cream and we're adding cheese. So let's salt it after. Quarter cup of cream per serving. This is a double batch. There we go. Mm. Mm -hmm. Boy, I'm ready to eat. Whew. I'll tell you the richness, the broth. Who the broth. Mm. Amazing. Okay, and so we add our ingredient of awesomeness, which I foraged down by our little creek. Do I put the whole leaves in or do I break them in half? I do not know. I think today I will break them in half. It doesn't matter. They're gorgeous. I love it. I love it. Boy, it's a good day for me. This is the kind of day where I love to do things like harvest the greens. But I'll tell you what, even on a bad day, pushing yourself down, to harvest the greens, doing something like that is a winning strategy. No doubt, no doubt. So these will cook a bit in this very hot broth. If we wanted them extra cooked, we'd wanna put all this back on for a little longer. Mm. Getting a facial at the same time. I should put that in the headline. Make soup and get a facial. Ooh, a steam facial. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. 
and the Parmesan that we so carefully grated right in there before we salt it. Definitely before you salt it. This has a lot of salt in it. The Parmesan does. If you know any of these recipes, the recipes in the soup skillets and sautés book in particular, kind of low in salt for my standard. It's close, but I like my stuff saltier. I actually like a lot of pepper. My kids are gonna just think that the world comes peppered because I add so much. There was already, I mean, there was a whole teaspoon of salt and pepper in this whole pot. I'm just adding more. So I use a white pepper. White pepper has really nice flavor, but it's kind of one of those fun things, just like tasting different salts too. Little flavor variation. That's one of those fun little things you can do. That's one of those things that takes you into those bad days. Makes you smile just a little bit more when you're eating your meal. Have a little bit of white pepper if you like it. Yeah, so if I had it, I would totally be adding the little bit of bacon as well. Nice little flavor in there with the bacon. I mean, right, there's always good flavor with the bacon, always, always. And so, especially if you're just finding me from this video, you will notice something very peculiar about the way I lost my 140 pounds. And it can all be summed up with this giant bowl, which is I ate one meal a day for about a year and lost 140 pounds. One meal, one giant meal. And so a meal that's equivalent to about half of this pot. <laughs> so I need a giant bowl for that. This is a giant bowl. This may not even fit half. <laughs> Before that scares you too much, stick around. Just stick around. I don't want you to be scared at the one meal a day idea. People in the community are eating too, for one thing. But if you understand why the one meal worked so well for me, it helps you make your own decision about what you're gonna do in your own situation. Cause you know, you don't have to eat just like I did. Frankly, wouldn't the world be boring if we just all ate the same thing? I think it would be. And so, as I mentioned, you can just jump into the three day challenge. This meal is very much like the day two meal and the three day challenge, but I don't want you to overlook the point about the one meal a day because it is important to understand why it's driving additional weight loss for us, because it can help you craft your own decisions. Now, a lot of people are like, oh my God, one meal a day, what? I, I starve all the time, I'm always hungry on these weight loss programs and you want me to eat in one meal? What, what? That's crazy. And I'll tell you what, that was the point that freaked me out about this as I launched into it, is I'm gonna be hungry all the flipping time. But it's kind of amazing. Now, so first of all, why it actually works. So many of us who've, who've, who've struggled with weight our, our entire life, who've done all the diets. And so a key point is I'm at my lowest weight as an adult right now. And this, so I always struggle to try to get down to like 170. You know, 167 was the, oh my gosh, I can't even believe I got to that weight now. And I just pushed on through to 140. I mean, what? What? And so people who've struggled for decades with their weight, so many of us are insulin resistant. And that is that our body starts to produce more and more insulin over the years in response to the food that we're eating. And by the way, we will produce more if we're eating more times throughout the day. And so all this diet advice about like have six little meals, make more insulin, make more insulin, make more insulin, make more insulin. And so as your body becomes insulin resistant, it has to make more insulin to have the same effect and to bring that blood sugar down. And so what we're doing with one meal a day, we're getting all of our nutrition in a very targeted period of time. And as a result, we're making less insulin. Insulin, guys, will keep you fat. You can only burn your fat if your insulin levels have come down. If you're eating throughout the flipping day, they're never gonna come down. You're gonna struggle with the weight because of that. But if you can bring your levels down, you're gonna have periods through the day where you are accessing your body fat and burning it. I'm telling you, okay. And so one meal a day, you get all your nutrition in one meal and you're then only making insulin like that one time a day, allowing your insulin levels to go down so that you can burn more fat. Okay, you know what? I know it sounds maybe kind of crazy. I just want you to try it. Just try it.
See how, see how it works. Okay, now so the other big barrier to this is like, oh my God, I'm gonna be starving all the time eating one meal a day, I know. Because again, like I said, that was my big concern. Man, the hunger I would go through on other diets and the idea of then only eating once a day. Now, first of all, I eat a powerful amount in my one meal. So I eat the one meal a day. It's a powerfully big meal. I'm satisfied. I'm really satisfied with my eating. I walk away from the food. I am able to turn that brain off and say, now this is the part of the day where I'm not eating. And as I tell people in the Eat Like a Bear community, eat like a bear, eat and go be awesome. Eat, draw the line, draw the line here. Walk away from the food. Yeah, you're gonna feel peckish, you're gonna feel a little hungry, walk away from it. Walk away from it because what's happening is you're training your body for tomorrow. I guarantee you that when you ate today, you're gonna be really hungry tomorrow, extra hungry tomorrow at that same time. And if you have a little snack seven hours later, you're gonna be ravenous seven hours after tomorrow too, and it's gonna make it harder. And so you're essentially training yourself today in what you're gonna be doing tomorrow. I encourage you to train yourself to the one meal a day model. You're not producing insulin as much. You get nice and satisfied, absolutely satisfied with your meal that allows you to say, I am done. I am done for the day and I am walking away. Eat and go be awesome. What is eat like a bear? Imagine the wild bear out in the forest, down in that river, catching the wild salmon and just ah, eating it. Okay. And then they prance out into the meadows and into the conifers and live their awesome lives until it's time to eat again. So eat like a bear, eat and go be awesome. This is a framework that works, gives you lots of nutrition, but in a targeted period of time in the day. All of your daily nutrition, possibly in just an hour. All your nutrition for the day in an hour? Well, yeah, why not? Eat and go be awesome. You've maybe tried the cabbage soup diet in the past. Check out my commentary on that until you catch me here another time.